This week on the Ritual Misery podcast, we're going to talk a little bit about Christmas. Yeah, Christmas is a thing, but um, I mean, so is Gloomhaven. Uh, we're going to talk about a bunch of things, mostly 2019 in review, because we have Richard Gunther on the show. Woo! Yeah, I'm so say, glad to be here. That, that, that is your cue, Richard. <laughs> Thanks for remembering us. Hello and welcome to the Ritual Misery Podcast, episode 237 for Thursday, the 26th of December, 2019. This is the show where two lifelong friends and their guests celebrate all things geek. I'm Amos, that's Kent, and between us, or if you're just listening to audio, the the, the third voice guy thing, that's Richard. Hey, Richard. Hey. Hey, I'm not supposed to be recording my own audio, am I? Because I wasn't doing that. <laughs> that's fine. <laughs> <laughs> Um, this is basically how my day's been. Yeah, we're we're only <laughs> running 36 minutes late, and that seems to be right on time for everybody's uh, tenacity tonight. So there we go. Well, good. Normally, I'm I'm super thrilled that it's Thursday because it's it's ritual misery time. Which mm-hmm. um, super thrilled it's ritual misery time. But the bad thing about it being Thursday, I have to work tomorrow. Oh. Mm. <laughs> Terrible. Mm. And the last Wait, does that mean you didn't? So I, you know I worked work today? on Monday. I worked on Monday. Had the next three days off. I'm working tomorrow, and then I had the next five days off. So it's like this, just d- interruption in the middle of my vacation. Here's it's too complicated. Here's the worst part of that. You're gonna work for one day, and exactly nothing is gonna get done unless an emergency happens, in which case one day will not be enough time. That sounds accurate. Yeah. 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 yeah that's how that works. <laughs> What about uh, you guys? Have you guys been taking some some time off the last uh, last week or so? Man, I ain't been doing nothing but playing Sim Airport. It was on Steam <laughs> on on sale on Steam. Like I probably I, I just got it like three days ago, and I probably logged in like thirty hours. Oh no, I left it running overnight last night, so I could finally get positive cash flow. So more like forty hours. Yeah, it's ridiculous. It's fun. It's like it's like Sim City, except it's just an airport. And and it's fun. Sim airports sounds a lot more fun than real airports. Uh, yeah, yeah, I hate <laughs> real airports. I, I can't stand them. <laughs> the best part about uh, best part about this game is the uh, the the passengers. They come and they go, and they're only on screen for about two seconds. Much better than real life passengers. Yes, <laughs> who just hang around and complain and. Oh, no, these still complain. Oh, I can't figure out how... There's always someone with that voice, that just screechy voice that you can't get away from in the airport. Sometimes it's the pilot and they want to tell you everything about it. Hey, look at these trees over here. Hey, look, more trees. Hey, guys, I know it's been a couple minutes, but here's some more trees. <laughs> not not that I'm speaking from experience. Richard, you say uh, you hosted Christmas dinner. Well, I mean, we we host say it would be in disingenuous for me to say that I hosted Christmas dinner because I'm the cleanup duty guy. We together hosted Christmas dinner with our friends uh, and their kids and um, kind of elders, their parents and and so on. And we ended up with uh, it wasn't too bad. It was like nine people here. It was more people than normally would sit around our dinner table, but it was a lot of fun. And Edward is an awesome cook. So we had a really good dinner with uh, some tenderloin beef as our main entree. And and we did not, unfortunately, we did not have green bean casserole, (laughs) but we did have mac and cheese. And so, you know, there's some comfort food there. Was, was, was the, was the mac and cheese homemade? The mac and cheese was homemade. Okay. Uh, actually, our friend's aunt creates this amazing mac and cheese out of ziti Ooh. that uh, the kids love and I love. I was probably more excited than the kids were that she brought it. And I can testify that Edward is a pretty good cook. 
Yeah, he's a damn good he's, cook. He so. just he, he's in there like just throwing shit around for half an hour. Then all of a sudden he's like, "Dinner's ready," and it's like, "Holy shit, this is amazing!" <laughs> and, and he's like, "Yeah, you should try this." And like, is that different than this? He's like, yeah, this doesn't have such such and blah and blah, or this has this and this and this because you said mm-hmm. you didn't like it, or so basically he ends up creating two meals in thirty minutes uh, out of. I don't know, it, like like pure fucking magic, um, <laughs> but it's it's really good. Like he has not made anything that I've had so far that was not just completely tasty. So yep. I haven't had Edward's cooking, but I did have green bean casserole. Uh, Steph makes a, a excellent green bean casserole, and she added that to the Christmas dinner yesterday, and it was absolutely fantastic. Hmm. We didn't do Christmas dinner. We didn't do Thanksgiving dinner because we didn't have an oven. We didn't do Christmas dinner because we've all just been sitting around doing nothing. Rick took this week off, and that's the, this house has just been like lounge central. It's uh, your it's your chill week. I mean, I did dishes today. <laughs> <laughs> Someone's doing laundry. Plowed uh, plow the I, driveway. I, I, like that's about it. I've done dishes and laundry more this week, I think, than I have like in any other particular week this year. <laughs> yeah. I don't know. It's weird. Well, so, and you will probably attest to this, but, you know, in our house when Edward cooks, I think he tries to use as many pans as possible. <laughs> and I think we have the heaviest fucking pans that you can buy. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, they're, and, they're made of so like vibranium. Or I was shit. on cleaning duty as because that's my job. That's what I'm good at. And wow, that we had like I think seven of those copper pots to clean in addition to you know dinner for nine. So, so have you guys ever heard of dinner for one? Like as in a comedy sketch called Dinner for One. It I don't think I have. Sounds familiar, but I I, 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 I had never heard of it until, I don't know, a few days ago, probably not even a week ago. Apparently, all of Europe, in particular Germany, but all of Europe except for the UK, every year for for New Year's Eve, it's a tradition that they watch this sketch called Dinner for One. The irony here is that it's a British comedy sketch that no Britons have ever fucking heard of ever. <laughs> but all the rest of Europe it adores this thing and like has it memorized. <clears throat> so if you've ever heard a, a, a European say, like in a joking manner, um, um, same procedure as every year or something like that, or the same procedure as last year, uh, that's that's where this is from. So I watched it. It's about a it's about a 15 or maybe, maybe like 17 or 18 minute long comedy sketch. It's actually pretty good. It was recorded in 1963 in Germany, but it was by a, a British uh, comedy troupe. Hmm. Uh, the the premise is that it's this this woman, this rich woman's um, 90th birthday, and every year for her birthday, she has hosted a dinner party with with guests. Right. Well, all of her guests that she would have every year are now dead. She is the lone survivor of this dinner party. And she has a, a like a manservant, like a butler, I guess, that serves the meal. And she insists that she that he set the the place for every guest that is not actually present. So the whole table, right? Except for her. And he has to play the part of every guest. So when she, so each course that he serves comes with a a course of um uh, of an alcoholic beverage to go with it. And he has to drink for every person. So he just gets drunker and drunker as the dinner party goes on. It's actually really, really funny how it's an annual tradition that that's sworn by by like literally the continent of Europe. I have no <laughs> idea. <laughs> but I, I included a link in the show notes. Um, so like for the people that um, that get this on podcast, like check it out. It's It's worth a watch so that you can at least get the the reference it's it is pretty funny never heard of it it sounds awesome though yeah yeah so when am i supposed to watch this new year's yeah it usually airs on european television at like 11 30 like on new year's eve 
So like right before the countdown. All right. Is the point to try to keep up with the manservant? I, I hope not because <laughs> because good luck. Like in the course of 15 minutes, this dude has like 20 drinks probably. Uh, so it's like the Ali, Ali, Ali Spagnola of, uh, or, um, uh, yeah, of, of, uh, Europe. Um, Kent, let's, t- let's, let's move on to some, some other things here. Uh, what'd you get for Christmas? Um, I got a stream deck. Yeah. Got a stream deck mini, uh, um, the 15 button version. Uh, the no, four it's, ver- the, it's the mini, it's the, uh, six button version. Nice. Um, I haven't had a whole lot of time to play with it, but it's super simple. It's so simple. Like I sat down for like 10 minutes, just, all right, let me see if I can get like one button to do something. I got three buttons to do something like within five minutes. Yeah. It's especially Um, for using OBS and sounders and stuff. It's amazing. Yeah. Yeah, totally. And I haven't, I haven't messed with the OBS integration yet, but like I set up, um, like for example, like for the video watchers can see that I've got a, a three button set up and I, one of them. Um, I actually just now used, it goes directly to the, um, it opens up a, a Twitch chat, the Ritual Misery Twitch chat for me, uh, which is super convenient. Um, and then, then just for kicks, I, I programmed it for um, uh, the intro and outro music for RMP. So the next time I host at the end of January, um, I'll just have to click those buttons. I won't have to bring up audio files and all that kind of stuff anymore. Nice. Pretty great. Just make sure they're not AIFF files. Cause these are these are wave files. Yeah, it's, it's either going it to be wave like or MP3s. Those? It does not like uh, your uncompressed formats. Interesting. Mm. It'll do waves, but it won't do um, AFs or uh, uh, what's the other one? There's another file format that's not compressed. That it won't do. Mm, interesting. Yeah. I actually have the 15 button on the way. Josh ordered mm. one, and he's been using it, and he loved it. And he's like, "It's on sale again. You should get that." I'm like, all right, let's get it. Yep, that's that's the one. Yeah, so I'm looking forward to it. It's uh, yeah, I I, I love it for the uh, for the OBS integration, but you can integrate it with so many more programs. Mm-hmm. Um, I'm hoping it will help me with editing. I I could use some shortcut buttons with my editing, and I do occasionally do some streaming. And so it'll be nice to have some quick things. Plus, maybe a physical mute button where I don't have to reach down to my keyboard for the right control key sequence. That would be nice too. Yes. No. That that would that would be something it could do. Um, I got. I got a I got to reach over here. <laughs> not prepared, Tom Merritt. You are not. No. <laughs> oh no! I think he, that that was pretty good. <laughs> Gloomhaven. So is it is this a board game? It 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 is. It's uh what's that that what's that board game that D&D board game we used to play when we were little like back in high school. A uh, little in high school. Um Yep. I do not recall the name. Hero of it. Quest. Hero Quest? Is that what it was? Yeah. Okay. Uh this is basically Hero Quest all grown up. Uh 95 adventures, some of them are replayable. Uh, the game is not a static game, so you're basically going through and playing D&D. You can play the adventures individually. You can play by yourself. You're supposed to play with two people, but you can play by yourself, and you're basically playing D&D by yourself. Uh, you can play up to four players. There, If you play by the strict rules, strict version of the rules, there are certain cards that once you use them, you will actually tear them up and throw them away. Like, it's... It's pretty intense, and I've been wanting it for a while. We saw it at Nerdtacular, although nobody would play it because uh, you know, nobody wanted to ruin anybody else's game. And now I have it. My sister-in-law actually got it for me, so probably the coolest Christmas present I've gotten in years uh, in my adult life. Maybe. I don't know. Uh, at wow. least in recent memory. And, um, yeah, it's sitting here. Now i got to get a couple people to play with and start uh, hammering away at, at Gloomhaven. Very like, cool. Like I'm way more excited than I'm willing to show on the stream. I, I, I wish we lived <laughs> in the same town so that I could just like drive over on a Saturday or something. Uh, yeah, it's 30 minutes per player, uh, per adventure, and there's 95 adventures. This is like a weeks long game. 
the game board itself actually changes as you play it. Like you have stickers and things like that that you put on the game board to change the game board as you're playing the game, as you're going through the the modules. For what right. it's worth, you may have just out geeked everyone. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't know what I I had no idea it was it was this big or this heavy. Um, and I, I got this box and I was like, what the hell is, did, she, did my sister-in-law like secret Santa me some sand? What is going on? This is, <laughs> yeah. Or like garage tools or something. It was, yeah. It was like the, I've, I have toolboxes full of tools that weigh less than this game does. And it was, it was right. pretty crazy, but it's so good. I'm so glad we had it. Um, I, I'm looking at it on Amazon right now and this is, there's a lot to this. Yes. That's, that's incredible. <laughs> Yeah, I, I I should almost do an unboxing, but I think there's probably ten million of them on there. Um, <laughs> yeah, it's it's kind of ridiculous. Ninety five versions of the game that you can play. Yeah, so excited. And luckily, I have kids that are into Dungeons and Dragons, so I should be able to con some of them into playing. That's the best way to do it. Yep, get your kids involved. Yep. All right. Um, well, Christmas talk is over. Richard, did you get anything cool for Christmas, or are you just going to look towards what the future holds in Vegas? Yeah, I um, I, I don't know, you know, that the coats that I got because I needed a winter coat, so I got a winter coat for Christmas, you, you and I needed a rain necessity? jacket, so I got a rain jacket for Christmas. So, um, yeah, probably not really something that qualifies for a geeky thing. But I did do a geeky thing in addition to planning for CES because it's not enough that I'm going out to Vegas in two weeks. But I, I booked a mileage run. Do you know what that is? So, I, I do because we've had this call this talk before, but I don't know if mm, Kate does. I believe this is the, the this is what you want to keep your status with an airline. And in order that, to do that, you need to yep. take a trip and get the miles that you need to keep that, like keep above like 10,000 miles or 50,000 miles or whatever, whatever your, your level is. Exactly. Exactly. I am 2,253 miles away from staying at my current status. And that status, if you travel a lot and I travel a lot is really important because that's the higher your status, the more likely you are to get seat upgrades. Seat upgrades means more leg room or maybe even pushed up to first class. So it might even mean a meal or something like that. And so when I have been traveling as much as I have over the last 20 years as a consultant, I learned that, okay, you need to really focus what airline you fly on so you get all your miles on that airline and it's not the miles that are important it's the status that's important so i didn't travel as much as i normally do this year and i'm just a little bit short and they wanted to charge me eight hundred dollars to buy the miles that i would need if i wanted to retain the status so instead i am spending 394 dollars to fly down to miami through atlanta and back all in the same day to get 2,350 miles. Wow. <laughs> that, like you, you're not even going to like get out of the airport and go do something in Miami. You're just going to like walk down the, the hallway and get on another plane. It's the same flight number. So I'm probably just going to get out, stand in the waiting area and get in line to get back on the plane again. Wow. Well, at least you get to experience an airport. That sounds awful. <laughs> okay. It, uh, it, it is going to suck. I understood all of it because two years ago, I think it was, that you went down and had to do a trip to Orlando oh, yeah. for like a, a weekend at Disney just, just to make sure that you hit the, hit the mileage or whatever. Um, but just I going down that. there and turning around and coming back? No. like I, yeah, I, I looked into going to Orlando. It's a hundred miles fucking short of what I need. <laughs> Damn. <laughs> Damn. Yeah. I would have stayed overnight if I were going to Orlando. I would have stayed anywhere. I, 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 I can't. I can't go down. I can't fly somewhere and then leave that same day, and just go back to where I came from. Like I can do a layover, but do a, a layover for a round trip? No. 
to like Same a hour, whole... dude. Four legs one day. It's going to be a joy. I'm going to take my laptop and my headphones. I don't want to talk to anybody. <laughs> well, too bad you can't watch Star Wars Rise of Skywalker during that. Flight or time in the oh airport. sure, rub that in. Just fly, go ahead and rub that in. Fly down to Miami just to watch Rise of Skywalker. <laughs> <laughs> You've got the really cool 4D theater down there. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, they let you watch it on the plane, so it feels like you're flying in all the motion sequences. <laughs> yeah. Um, but speaking of Rise of Skywalker, uh, we're no longer in last place, Amos. Really? R- what? Wait. Wait. Are you sure? Pretty sure. How do you know? <laughs> well, I, you know what? I don't know. I, I'm not really sure, but I bet Jay's going to tell me. Let's right. let's find out. Welcome to your Blue League Movie Draft Minute, presented by DiamondClub.tv for the week of December 23rd, 2019. I'm your host, Big Voice Jay. Diamond Club's getting together to ring in the new year all around the world. Join us at twitch.tv slash DC Streamathon. Let's go to the scoreboard. Team Snowshoes in last place with $196 million. Team Gelf gets fifth place with $199.4 million. Team RMP is in fourth place with $271.2 million. Team Geek Girls gets $6.4 million from Little Women and third place with $277.9 million. Team Have a Drink gets $4.7 million from Spies in Disguise and second place with $467.3 million. And in first place with $615.3 million, it's Team D. KG. Let's your Stream Team Movie Draft Minute. For up-to-date listings, follow Stream Team Draft on Twitter. Okay, so we're no longer in last place. I think there's a good chance we're going to finish third. <laughs> mm, you're going up, and I'm about to be going down in my league. <laughs> I'm in yeah. fourth place with Squid in our league, but... Now that Star Wars is out, that's not going to be for long. <laughs> oh, that's right. Yeah, because um, uh, uh, BS with W and S had Star Wars and uh, Doctor Doolittle. So their first movie just came out, Star Wars, hmm. and they made yep. over two hundred fifty thousand dollars on that, or two hundred fifty million dollars on that already. And they're only what thirty, not even thirty million behind you. Yep, uh, and we're what. Four, five, six, six days into this. Well, seven days into this now, I guess. I don't yeah. know how many days are counted in that data. But, yeah, I mean, clearly they're going to overtake us. So Skywalker hoped, better have a hell of a resurgence on the second week. I I hope so. Man. I, I'm i still confident that it, it's going to breach half a million or half a billion dollars. I'm, I'm confident in that. But Oh, I don't uh, doubt that. I don't doubt that. I think it will. I I don't think it's going to hit the numbers that Tom's going to need to win with it, though. Hmm. I don't know. It just doesn't. It 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 just didn't have that bang out of the gate that I expected it was going to have. Right. Yeah. It was it was the lowest opening for a like current gen, like Disney uh, era Star Wars movie. It was the 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 slowest money maker. Which is crazy. Uh, but it's surprising to me. And the killer thing is that the movie isn't slow at all. There's there there's like one lull, one slow part in the entire movie. Everything else is pretty packed either with information, uh, and you know, information in, in the form of dialogue or action sequences. Like it's it's a chock full movie. Two and a half hours yeah. of, of balls at the wall. Yeah. Two and a half hours of adrenaline rush, basically. Um, yeah, I don't know. I don't know. We'll talk about it later though. All right. Um, <laughs> should we even spin Patreon this week? I mean, I didn't post the last two weeks video, two weeks ago's video because I've been too busy playing Sim Airport. So, well, m- maybe we should I, spin I Sim Airport's you Patreon. Wanna, if you want to hear all of our, our very, very, very fresh thoughts on Star Wars Rise of Skywalker, it will very soon be on patreon.com slash ritual misery. Uh, we, we went for what, like two, three hours, something like that? You, well, me, and Squid? We went for about an hour and a half on a two and a half hour movie, and then we went for about another hour on random bullshit, and then oh, right. we went on another <laughs> hour of drunken 
foolery that I don't even know like when the stream stopped, but we just <laughs> Uh, I know I went to bed at like five o'clock in the morning and I was shit hammer drunk when I went to bed. So <laughs> yeah, I was not in good shape. It's a damn good thing that I took Friday off last week. <laughs> um, but yeah, if you, if you're interested in that, check it out. It's patreon.com slash ritual misery. How much of it is there? Uh, yeah, you see <laughs> some of it might be, <laughs> <laughs> Uh, yeah. Anytime the producer gets shit hammer drunk, you know something's going to go wrong. Hey, let's hit that other button. Um, how about this one? Can I please have your attention? In the last 30 minutes, Kent's done something. Now you've got a guess. He was very excited. Kent's Games. Play with him. Play with him. Play with him. Our game this week is called Once Upon a Time in 2019. It's a, it's an echo of last year's game exactly a year ago. Well, give or take a day or two, once upon a time in 2018, where I take some uh, some questions out of the events that have occurred over the last year, and uh, each of you get to answer five of them. I'm just going to so, start off by saying that you you put the emphasis on the wrong syllable. Okay. <laughs> okay? I don't know. Anyway. <laughs> All right. Uh, I'm going to virtually flip a coin here. Richard, would you call heads or tails? I am going to call Tails. It is Tails. Would you like to go first or second? I will go first. Okay. Oh. Richard, your first question is, scientists from the Event Horizon Telescope Project announced that they had captured the first ever image of what? Of the inside of a black hole. That is correct. That was There's easy. been a lot of, of photos of like um, you know evidence of, of a black hole, like you know starlight trailing and stuff like that. But this is the first time an actual black hole was photographed. Um, yeah, pretty pretty amazing in my opinion. Or big orange asshole. I mean, sure. It's kind of what it looks like. Depen- depends on how political you want to get, I guess. <laughs> Wow. Okay. Um, <laughs> well done. Next. Well done. First question. In April, a major fire broke out in which iconic building in France? Oh, um, uh, uh, I, like I just saw a picture of it today. It's almost like you just saw the words. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, I know what you're referring to, actually, Richard. Um, so so I'll, I will repeat it. In April, a major fire broke out in which iconic building in France? Uh, I, I can't remember the name of it. Yeah. Uh, three seconds? And I watched it burn, too. And uh, uh, Um... Oh man, Richard knows the answer. Yes, is, it is the Notre Dame Cathedral. Notre Dame, yes. Yeah, yeah. That was really sad to watch. Have you have you been to Notre Dame, Richard? I have. Yeah, I have. Yeah, yeah. that was that there, was just crushing to watch. It it was definitely upsetting. I mean, I've never been, and it was upsetting for me. Yeah, I mean, it's just so iconic, right? Like it's a it's a like a uh, world treasure, you yeah. know. Um, all right, um, we'll see if it, how much you treasure uh, this next one, Richard. Uh, he became a teen idol for playing Dylan on the TV series Beverly Hills 90210, and but sadly, he passed away in March at the age of fifty-two. Oh, was this is crazy. Yes, Luke Perry it was indeed Luke Perry. Yeah, the young age of fifty-two. That was that was kind of sad. I wasn't like a huge fan of Luke Perry, but I, I respected his work. I I, I knew him um, from that television show. I was one of the. Uh, I mean, I, I don't know if I admitted <laughs> at the time in high school that I actually watched. <laughs> Nine, you know, but I definitely tuned in. I uh, so, I admitted watching Nine Hundred Two and O, and I could do that with with safety in high school because it was the only channel I got because we didn't have cable. 
Yeah, that's a good like, point. Too. Did you watch Nine Twenty? I was like, Fox is the only channel I get. Doofus. Like, yeah, I watched it. There's nothing else on. It's no, either that I or. Did. <laughs> <laughs> <Right>. <sighs> yeah, I um, I I, I did not watch Nine Hundred Two One Zero, although I did admit to watching Melrose Place, but ah. uh, it hit me really hard because guess how old I was when I learned of his death. Ah, 50, 53 two. years old. Oh, yeah. Mm. Yeah. Well, Amos, your next question. That I will certainly get wrong. <laughs> <laughs> March. <laughs> so the month, the month of March this year saw strikes by school children to raise awareness of climate change after being inspired by which teenager? Greta. Give it to him. Come on, give it to him. Uh, do you know her? Greta Grunberg. Give it to him. All right, I'm getting all right, I'm getting that's close enough. Greta, close enough. It's Gre- uh, Greta Thunberg. Uh, the, the Swedish uh, teenager that uh, blew people's minds at the um, uh, was the United Nations uh, Council on Climate Change or, yeah. or something like that. Um, wow. Was she like, yeah, she did it several times this year. Well, yeah, yeah but, but that one, speech in like, particular. And by the way, if you have not seen that, you oh, need to go and watch her speech. It is phenomenal. Or you're a She's commie. freaking 16 I'm, years old. I'm I actually just got I, I was thinking back to that. And the thing that 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 struck me was like the the uh, you know, the the how dare you tone yeah. she had. I think she might have actually said how dare you. Yeah. She did. Yep. Wait, um, and just the intensity that she's that using to speak to world leaders, like the leaders of planet Earth, that she's speaking <laughs> in person. Yeah. And like I got chills just now when I, as I was recalling. The, as you're saying it, I'm yes, I have goosebumps right now as you're saying it. Yes. Yeah. It's incredible. The thing so, for me wasn't the what she said and it wasn't the tone that she had and it wasn't like her personal mission. It's the fact that she's that self-aware and that under like she understands that much about the world at 16. Like at 16 I was and, Yeah. I you know I was still humping furniture I think I don't like I don't remember <laughs> any world issues you know I'm sure I was too like uh, <laughs> not the same furniture though yeah oh yeah 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 definitely not. Uh, but no but not only that like uh, if, unless I'm mis- like she's on the spectrum right like yes. she's got like Aspergers I think yep um like just amazing the courage of that that girl like uh, incredible. Like, I'm a huge fan of that girl. Richard, yep. your next question. Why did NASA cancel an all-female spacewalk in March? Because <laughs> they're a bunch of idiots, and they only had one suit on the station that would fit a woman. <laughs> that is correct. Um, yeah, what? Like, how? How? <laughs> like, this was planned no being prepared for so for every- long. My 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 problem with this is, what happens if that one goes bad? Yeah, like I I just I mean you only have one of something. If if that one goes bad, you have none of them. Like, why wouldn't you have more than one? Just well, they in probably general, have like one, they probably have like one set, right? Like, so if if you needed one, like each astronaut needs one spacesuit and like three backups, there's probably four suits, right? They didn't have enough for the for the entire crew is the point. Yeah, uh, I, my bet is that if I understand this right, I think I don't think they have that level of redundancy, but they do have extra suits and they could still use those suits if they needed to take cover for oxygen or for safety inside the station. It's just mm-hmm. that something that's so ridiculously large on you is not going to be usable when you need to go out and actually do work. Right. Yes. Yeah, they're not tourists up there. Like this they're they're up there to do a job, a very right. difficult job at that. <laughs> Incredible. Yeah. Incredible. Unbelievable. Amos, Speaking of which, in- did did you see the the Elizabeth Warren reply a couple weeks ago when they said you'd be the oldest president 
yeah, ever that, inaugurated? That and she said, yeah, but I'd be the youngest woman ever inaugurated. Yeah. Wow. <laughs> yeah. That was pretty good. That was pretty good. It yeah. is true. All right, Amos. In May, a cleanup of which location removed three metric tons of trash and four human corpses in only two weeks? A cleanup of a location in May removed three metric tons of trash and four human corpses. My sister-in-law's bedroom. <laughs> oh my God. Shots fired. Um, that's not what I have here. Would you like to give it another <laughs> shot? Uh, uh, this is in May? In, yeah, May of this year. What natural disasters happened in May? Um, I, I I have no idea. That would be Mount Everest. Oh, oh, I remember reading about that too. Sent an expedition up to Mount Everest just on, to on get trash. Cleanup. Yeah, and, uh, yeah. And they they were actually going to go for like I think eight bodies, but six of them were still too frozen or in, in, inaccessible for them to accomplish. Yeah, something like that. Yeah. Yep. I can um, only get the two that just happen to be lying on the surface. How awkward is that? Yeah, and that's that's always been crazy to me because over the last few years I've been hearing stories about climbers that, like, they have landmarks. Like, corpses are landmarks. Mm-hmm. Like, you know, once you get past the, the guy in the orange coat, like, you got about another half mile. Like, what the fuck? Yeah. It's incredible. I think the, it was interesting that the – the exposure that that got this year as like what a shit show it is right now. It's just, it's, it's not well managed. It's not, it's, it's not like the, it has insignificant governance mm-hmm. and support for the amount of people that they're allowing to go through there these days. It's just, it's really a mess. And uh, frankly, I think they should, completely rethink it. I think they should pull back dramatically on permits. Well, and they, they did. They pulled back dramatically on permits, which caused the price of permits to skyrocket and people started paying the higher prices. So then they release, started releasing more permits because now it's a fundraiser. Mm. It's like, you know, so th- that, that really, that yeah. trap has been sprung and then that, mm. now they're stuck mm. there because it costs so much to go up there, but people are still paying it. it it's, it's it's just not a good situation at all and people That's, like fans yeah. of Everest have been saying it for years but it's just now hitting the international stage as a newsworthy item which is remarkable yep. to me yeah. yeah all right richard your next question in may this is also in may a new york city street was renamed in honor of a show's 50th anniversary what was that show a street in new york was renamed in honor of this show Wow. In honor of a show. Yeah, and it was the show's 50th anniversary when they... I know what the show is, but I can't imagine... I can't remember what the name of the street is. Well, I think I know it. So, I mean, I... (laughs) All right, I'm going to say, like, Sesame Street? Maybe? It is, in fact, Sesame Street. (laughs) Yes. Well, you threw me off when you said, well, I think I know the show, but I don't know what the street would be called. <laughs> well, I mean. <laughs> I mean, it could have been Big Bird Way. Right. <laughs> you know. Yeah. Oh, that's it. Sure, sure. Uh, <laughs> I didn't Snuffle actually about corner. this until I was, until I was researching uh, 2019 events. Uh do you, I, I don't know where this where this was. Like I mean, I would assume you would do it in Manhattan, right? Like to to get the because if you want publicity, like Manhattan's where the publicity is. Yeah, you would think, and you would think if if at that, it would probably be somewhere near where there are like studios and stuff like that. So who knows? Mm-hmm. I don't I don't honestly know where it is. I didn't even really know that this had happened, but. I didn't know of any other 50th anniversary TV shows this year. So, exactly. All right, Amos. When diver Victor Vescovo made the deepest dive ever to the bottom of the Mariana Trench, 
What was he disappointed to find? Nothing. Okay. That's your answer? He he didn't find anything there. All right. So for this one, this is a weird situation. So for this one, I have three options for you. So I'm going to go ahead and read them, and then you tell me if, if you still want to stay to your answer, because what you just said is one of the choices. Okay. A plastic bag, a shopping cart, or nothing? Now you have me questioning myself, because you're a <laughs> jerk. I'm going to go, this- go with the plastic bag. Yeah, because if it was nothing, then I just would have right. played the applause and moved on. Right. It's, it's just like it's, uh, Richard's question about the the uh, space suits. Hmm. Uh, I had I had choices for that one as well, but Richard <clears throat> knew the answer right off the bat. So um, uh, it's um, a money hall pro- problem. So yes, I'll go with uh, the other answer. The plastic bag. Yeah. Yes, it is plastic bag. Um, That's awful. Yeah. That's I it, did not know about this. That is just yeah. friggin' awful. I remember I remember the lack of life, but I didn't think or didn't remember the plastic bag until you mentioned it. And then it hit the beacon. Yeah, yeah. Mm. And that's like the amount of pressure that is at the bottom of the Mariana Trench, and plastic still just there. A plastic bag, no less. Um, yeah. Wow. Um, in fact, so like. A lot of cities are doing the plastic bag ban at uh, you know retail stores and whatnot. And Albuquerque, I just read about today, Albuquerque is about to institute that ban as well. We have that here in Wasilla. You can't use disposable bags. You have to. They can only carry reusable bags. And to start off with, um, Walmart started charging ten cents a bag. Mm-hmm. Um, which uh, can't you've been in Korea? I'm sure you bought something there. You know that they charge you like six won a bag or whatever, six yen or one. It's one. Uh, it's like six won a bag or something like that. In Japan, mm-hmm. the same way. Like they charge you for the bags already. So then, when we were getting charged here, but he's all getting pissed off. You'd see people walking out the store carrying all this stuff, you know, because <laughs> yeah. uh, Walmart typically doesn't send paper bags up here because they're just yeah. you know. Well, it doesn't take long for for people to start bringing their own bags like that well, was pretty standard in Europe the th- the th- yeah the thing was like everybody's pissed off about having to pay 10 cents a bag but that's just standard practice like everywhere else yeah, yeah. we've been doing well, that for like a decade and and now they don't even charge because people made such a fuss and also Walmart was the only store that was charging for the thicker bags mm. so and we still bring them home and use them the same way we always did but now we can use them more times mm. you know you don't have to it's not just a one time use trash bag you can Keep using it until something gets nasty in there, then throw it away. I use them for for dog poop and cat poop. <laughs> hmm. I don't use them for much else. Other than that. Yeah, we use them bathroom trash bags and dog poop. Yep. 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 Uh, dog right, poop still a one time use thing though. That's your, well, yes, of course. Good idea. <laughs> Good once idea. the poop's in it, that's it. Yeah, that's <laughs> yeah. In in fact, once there's poop in any of them, even at the bathroom ones, you know, because sometimes it's just Q tips and. And snotty tissues or whatever you can you can reuse that bag, but once there's poop in any of the bags, it, it's oh, done. Yeah. What well, I, I think it's a good idea to yeah, I think it's a good idea to get rid of any bag that has poop in it, <laughs> just automatically. All right, Richard, <laughs> your, your final question in this quiz: Who was the star of the re, re, recently released film Joker? Who played the Joker? Joaquin Phoenix. That is correct. Amos, your final question, which Joker, by the way, is what's screwing us in this movie draft. Because ah, he, and I need Joker. to see that, too. I have not seen that. Oh, oh, man. What a movie. That's Did you see it, Amos? It is. Uh, no. it, it's it's pretty good. I mean, you either you're either going to. You're either going to love it or hate it, and I think. Either opinion that you have is equally justified. I but it is a great movie. I I, I heard initially yeah. that, that it was pretty deep and and that you're going to want to watch it again. And as soon as I hear that about a movie that I don't have that need to watch it right now, I immediately put it on the DVD list. So as mm. soon as it comes out on DVD, I'll watch it because yeah. I have a feeling that I'll want to watch it again in retrospect with the information that you gained at the end of the movie. See, that's interesting that you're hearing that because I don't really have a desire to watch it again. It made me feel bad. <laughs> <laughs> well, maybe you took the wrong things into the I movie mean, with you. 
<laughs> yeah, well, and that's well, yeah, that's because that, that, it's one of those movies. It's so brilliantly directed and and acted and uh, just shot. Like it's it's. Hmm. Like I said, I'm just going to repeat what I said. I, I think it's an objectively great movie. What you get out of it and how you feel about it is going to be based on the individual. But I don't think you can argue that it's a, like a shitty movie. Like I don't, I don't mm. know that anyone could possibly argue that. What's uh, my last it, question? This is your last question here. Which former New York mayor has announced a late bid to become the U.S. Democratic presidential nominee? Bloomberg. Yeah. Um, yeah, that was kind of like that was the last question I threw in here, and I knew it was kind of a, a gimme. Um, but this means that your scores combined. <laughs> Richard's score being a five and yours being a three, Amos, means that Richard won, first of all. But also, the two of you have collectively beat the D. Yes. Oh, yes. All right. Wait, but wait. I, I love beating the wait, wait, D, wait, wait. especially You're so when I can do it with that Richard. Because he got a D. Well, I got the D, but you clearly beat the D, so you beat my D. <laughs> Richard beat Amos's D this week on the Ritual Misery podcast. <laughs> Whoa. <laughs> Where was that headline when he we, needed one? We were fine just talking about it, and then Richard wanted to extrapolate more data from the set, and, well, now it comes out like that. So that's how that works. Hey, um, that was a good that was a good game. We should uh, we should do uh, thinking games more often, Kent, because a lot of those were, were topic uh, conversational starters. However, yeah. it is now time for the 2019 in review because, well, we've only got like five days left of the year and shit's going to end soon. So we might as well enjoy the year that was. Yeah. So, I mean, everybody tends to focus on the negative. Uh, you know, this shitty thing happened this year and this awful thing happened this year. But, I mean, good things happen as well. Yeah, yeah, but we, we, we don't want to talk about the negative. We've already done that for 45 episodes. It's time for us to be positive for the rest of the year. Wait, I have negative things on my list. Did, wait, that's did fine. I do it wrong? No, that, that's, that's fine. fine. That's fine. It's okay. perfectly fine. I, uh, I, I, I think all of us have at least one negative thing on our list. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, except, totally. for, except for Kent, and I'll find a way to make something negative on his. <laughs> oh, no, I've got a negative thing. Got a negative thing. Um, but, but the thing is, we, we're going to start out with some of the things that we enjoyed. So let's go with the best movie of 2019. Amos, what did you what did you enjoy the most as far as movies go? I picked Rise of Skywalker. I thought it was a great movie. Uh, it, it sums up the series really well, and I got us got it. I, I have to admit, I enjoy it a lot more now. I enjoy the memory of it a lot more now because I haven't seen it again. Um, that I've been home to watch all the negative reviews that are so completely full of shit. <laughs> Um, it's a great movie. Like just by itself, it's a great movie. It's great to have backstory. I mean, there's certain parts of it that are almost required for backstory, but a lot of it could be alluded to by in context. And I think just by just just by standards of a Star Wars movie, and um, by the standards of the end of a trilogy, and by the standards of 2019, it's a great fucking movie. Go watch it. Yeah, I could I could take everything that you just said and apply it to my opinion of my favorite movie of 2019 that would be Avengers Endgame um, pretty much exactly the same thing I loved that movie don't get me wrong I loved Rise of Skywalker as well uh, but uh, Endgame just I guess it resonated more like the the intensity of emotion that I got from Endgame I think probably trumps even uh, what I felt for Rise of Skywalker hmm. Hmm. that's interesting did I tell you I watched Thor Ragnarok it's a pretty good movie. I laughed ah. several times. Oh, that is a pretty that, good movie. I love that movie. And that's, uh, I actually, uh, I got this mouse pad for Christmas for my son. <laughs> it, it says Ragnar Rock. And it's, uh, it's got Thor and Hulk, like in a rock band. And, uh, <laughs> uh, Richard, that what was, was your so favorite movie. movie of 20? Well, I have not seen Rise of Skywalker yet. And I think people need to just, I don't know, maybe calm the fuck down and enjoy themselves. <laughs> Because I'm amazed by all the hate that I'm hearing, and I just don't. Oh, please. Okay. Anyway, so 
I agree with you, Kent. I think of the movies that I saw this year, and I don't see movies very often, but that means that I don't pick to go see a movie in the theater often. And when I do, I want it to count. And mm. of anything that I've either seen on video or in theaters, Endgame, I think it was amazing. And frankly, like, it, the one, you know, this is one of those movies very much like the uh, Lord of the Rings series. Of course, the Lord of the Rings series was only three movies, whereas this was 21 or 22. So it kind of deserved this a little bit more than Lord of the Rings did. But it had multiple endings, mm. right? There were kind of multiple final scenes to lay everything out. And a couple of those just really got to me. And I I was not seeing that coming. Right. Uh, what about TV shows? Um, I noticed that, Richard, you didn't put a TV show in your list. Have you had a, a time to think about one that's your favorite? Yeah, you know what I noticed is that nobody put Game of Thrones in their list. I think that's really interesting. Um, I, I thought I, about it. I, I, can, I, I considered the, it, but... I enjoyed the final season of Game of Thrones. I'm probably in the minority. I mean, especially if you listen to just the pulse of the internet. Um... I enjoyed the final season, and I'm not ashamed to admit it. I'll fight anybody that wants to fight about it. But <laughs> um, <laughs> I understand. I understand people's disappointment with the final season, especially like the final episode. But I, I'm I'm at peace with it. If we don't like how that ended, George R. R. Martin's going to end it differently. So we just got to wait 38 years until the next two books come out, <laughs> and we'll get yeah. the ending we want probably. <laughs> yeah. Uh, for me, it was hard. There are a couple series that I've watched, which I thought were really good. And I've, I've watched two of them very recently. And so they're probably closer to mind than the others. But of the the things that I liked the most, I'm probably going to pick Star Trek Discovery. I am blown away by how good the series is. And since I refuse to pay CBS's extortion fee to watch their streaming service <laughs> i waited until season two came out on disc before i watched it and i binged it and oh my god it is so 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 freaking good i'm even waiting. got edward watching at points I'm waiting well, to see that a couple of seasons are out and Picard is out. And then I'm probably going to pay the um, or, or sign up for the what is it? One week or two week free trial. Mm -hmm. that yep. Yes. And then just binge that shit. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, Picard is going to make me use my free trial. That's yeah. Uh, that's yeah, how yeah. it's going to go. I'm super looking forward to that. Yep. Me I, too. Will, I will me say too. that uh, Richard, you said that you even even got Edward watching it. That's why I like Mandalorian so much is because it's. It's getting people involved in the Star Wars universe that otherwise would be completely away from it, to include my wife. Um, I know most of the stories are rehashes, but it's done just so excellently. And it's like every episode is out there not to waste my damn time. They're 33 or 37 minutes long. They get to it. They, you know, there's no, there's no, none of this extra cinematic shit. There's no musical scenes and stuff. It's just like, here's the story. And now, okay, this, this is it. And, wait till next week and then you can see more of the story. It's just, it's really, it's, it's comfort food in the star Wars universe for the, uh, for the, for the soul. I love it. Yeah. I, I love that show. You and I watched the first two episodes of that together, I believe when it first came out. And mm -hmm. I really, really like that show. I think they're doing a great job with it. I, I, I that's another show where I think people are expecting too much of it. I like it because it's doing, it's like hitting all the right buttons, but I didn't go into it with any specific expectations. And I, you know, I hear Brian talk about it on Court Killers and I hear other people talk about it and they're, they're frustrated by it. And well, I mean, how did, how did you expect it to ever, to, to not become like episodic stories? Eventually that was going to happen. But we need now we need to find out, OK, what's what's the point? Because they're going to they, they're wrapping it right. They're wrapping the first season. So what's the point of the first season? And I hope that hits a good chord. Yeah, I 
I also love the Mandalorian. That was actually my pick for show of the year. Um, the, uh, people hating on Star Wars, even even like in a minor chord, like the way uh, you you mentioned Brian um, on Chord Killers, the the, the way mm-hmm. that he talks about Star Wars. Um, I'm not sure what like I don't know why people look at Star Wars as like cinema, like it's a Scorsese film. In your, that's not what it <laughs> is. That is not like it's not to be judged on the same scale. It, it, it's like trying to 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 judge uh, a Scorsese film against, um, oh, I don't know, Ducktales or something. Like, why why are you even comparing them? They're yeah, both I mean, visual, it, it's like the first film was so was like cheesy by design, right? right. And. And if I remember correctly, I think it was on Court Killers where they were talking about going back and watching the first episode, watching or episode four of Mm -hmm. Star Wars and saying that it doesn't live up. It doesn't live up. That's (laughs) that's what started it. That's what this is all based on. Right. Yeah. And arguably, like people will say that's the best one. Well, some some would say Empire Strikes Back, but one of those first two movies to come out, um, almost universally, people will say those are the best. Um, I think Rise of so Skywalker I, is the best. Yeah, well, and, and the thing is, I love Star Wars. I am a child when I watch Star Wars. It doesn't matter what I'm. I don't care if it's one of the new movies, one of the mm-hmm. old movies, uh, if it's one of the the um, like Disney XD cartoons. Like I'm a fucking child when i watch these and i just i love the feeling that star wars gives me it's just like it, it ignites my imagination and people talking about like well well you know uh, rose tico should not have ever man, fucking shut the fuck up nobody gives a fuck i'm still i'm in my star wars universe having a great fucking time and you can sit over there and shut the fuck up like uh, i get really <laughs> bad about people being upset with star wars like just I, I, I think up. you can summarize my feelings about star <laughs> wars and people hating on it uh, by modifying a, a george carlin quote hey preacher there's two dials on the tv one that turns the volume down and one changes the fucking channel go watch something else <sighs> right yep yeah. yeah i'm watching what i want because i like it and that's how that goes all right, uh, yep, let's let's answer. go on to some uh, some personal moments. Of course, I probably had the biggest one uh, with my retirement from the Air Force. Uh, thus, the uh, majesty has begun. Um, Your majestic beard. Yeah, I fucking love it, man. I, I, God, I look so good on camera. I don't look that good in person. <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, we could all be the judge of that, right? Mm. Uh, uh, I think but- it's. I think I, I look objectively worse in person than I do on camera. But um, I, I I think Richard would join me in, in congratulating you once again for your your retirement from the Air Force. Um, the huge huge life change for you. Like that's your mm. your life is not even doesn't even resemble what it did a year ago. No, that's no. awesome. I can smoke yeah, weed so now. Cool. I can eat even if it does mean a beard, beard, that's still I'm still really happy for you. <laughs> uh, uh, Richard, what what was a, a a great moment for you personally this year? Um. I don't know if Anthony is expecting this or not, but my favorite moment of the entire year was my trip out to L.A. this summer Mm. when there was that informal DTNS meetup and there was some uh, work being done over at Jenny's Infinite Gain company. Studio organization, yeah, and yeah, we did our the last recap of the Game of Thrones series that we had done, and I also visited two companies that I had uh, been kind of reporting on, and that I know people at for uh, the last couple of years, and then I hooked up with some friends that I haven't seen in years. It was just it, that week was such an emotional high for me. It was amazing. I had such an amazing time. Yeah, it still kills me that Kent could have been there and chose not to because he's a putz. <laughs> it wasn't an A or B. Like, it wasn't a zero sum. Like, uh, be there or don't be there. Like, there was, there was other factors, man. <laughs> I would no. have loved to there. No, no. There, in my mind, you should have been there. Like, there's no reason yeah, for you not to be so there. It was so good. 
was so good. Oh my god. And and I got to go to Galaxy's Edge while I was there. Yep. Yeah. So good. Yeah, what you, an amazing. You, you beat Jenny by like four days. <laughs> she lives in California. <laughs> well, and one of the th- yeah, that, that is funny. One of the things that I did while I was out there, one of the companies I was meeting with was uh, uh, Smart Labs, Insteon. And I was meeting with them to write a piece about what they're up to, what they've been doing. Ultimately, writing that up and the conversations that I had and meeting with people there ended up like yielding some work for me with them later this year. So, yeah, it was just an amazing trip. Very cool. All right, how about you, Kent? Um, yeah, so I didn't, I, I couldn't narrow it down to one thing. I, I didn't have any like big events this year. I didn't do any major travel. Um, no life changing events for me. Um, I t- this year has been probably one of the like most steady as she goes <laughs> you, years that I've you, had. In a you did while. go to the broken throat, bro- broken throne uh, pre opening. That is true. That is 100% correct. I've actually I've got their um, uh, their coaster right here. Uh, so Broken Throne Brewing, uh, Casey from the Have a Drink Show uh, podcast, uh, good friends of ours. I was actually able to attend Casey's uh, opening of his brewery, and uh, that that was actually um, yeah that might actually be one of my uh, uh, highlights of the year because that was that was fantastic. That was really cool. I was very happy to hear about that. Yeah. Yeah. Super awesome. Um, all right. So let's move on to to science. Um, Richard, did you have a, 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 a scientific moment of the year that kind of stood out to you? Um, yeah. Uh, so if I remember correctly, I think this was the year that we learned that, you know, we probably fucked our planet up beyond the point that we're going to be able to recover it properly. So we're all doomed. Uh, yet another George Carlin philosophy has become reality. Mm. <laughs> I don't know. He's the one that said the planet's fine. It's the people that are fucked. It's something like that. That yep. sounds like a good paraphrase. Um. He, he, he also, as far as my memory goes, uh, created the concept of maybe, uh, maybe the planet is just trying to come up with a way to get rid of us. Like global warming is just a fever. AIDS was just a <laughs> anti-vaccine or a vaccination. Like, yeah. <laughs> yeah. I mean, good be. Yeah. Um, so the, the, the science story that I chose this year was the first picture of the black hole. I know we, we talked a little bit about that earlier. Um, when growing up, I was just space was the most fascinating thing to me. Like I, I thought a lot about space and uh, a lot of the achievements that we've been making over the last decade or so are so just um, so advanced and so just like w- would have been so out of reach in the 80s and 90s. Uh, one of those being taking an actual photograph of a black hole. And that to me is just wonderful. Mm-hmm. Amos? Um, that's Yeah, that's pretty cool. Uh, you... you, you... <laughs> You you t- you titled it in here thought provoking science story and all the science I've seen so far this year has just to me been like yeah no shit this is eventually going to happen so it's all things that I've already been thinking about kind of you know just checking the boxes yeah it's like this is all you know the the world's going to end yeah well we <laughs> fucking figured that out um, black holes exist yep no that's yeah yeah we I thought we'd I mean Neil deGrasse Tyson told me that like five years ago so. You know, <laughs> if I had questions about it before, I don't anymore. You know, like there, none of the, none of the science was really all that intriguing to me this year because it all just seemed to it, it seemed to be thoughts that already had coming to fruition or or developing proof to acknowledge my previous opinion or you know there was nothing that was like holy shit maybe I was wrong or you know maybe holy I could learn it was kind of like the whole year just confirmed to me that the the world's fucked so. Um, yeah, I didn't really put anything in there because that, that, the whole, that, that, the whole thing. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> well, on that note, um, I'll go ahead and I'll go ahead and do my next one first. Um, so this was the, uh, most WTF 
moment of the year. I had a hard time parsing this one down uh, to just one. Uh, but the one that I decided to put in here was uh, the creation of U.S. Space Force. And yes, that's official now. As of, I think, last week, it mm-hmm. became uh, signed into law and it actually exists now. Um, uh, why? Like, this is just, I mean, I feel... I don't like getting political on this show, but like I feel like this is just a chief executive wanting to fucking like be mentioned as many times as possible in the history book. Um, this has no fucking purpose. We already have U.S. Space Command that's run by the fucking United States Air Force. Yep. Now we have U.S. Space Force, a separate branch of service that's subordinate to the United States Air Force. In much the same way that the Marine Corps belongs to the Department of the Navy, the U.S. Space Force belongs to the Department of the Air Force. So who does the Army have, though? Themselves? Like, now they, now they need somebody. Maybe, maybe like, the Salvation Army can become part of the uh, subservient to the actual Army. They'll have people no, in, let's not do that. In fatigues jingling the bells so that I can get even let's angrier. not do that. Yeah, I mean, th- this seems ridiculous. It seems like just... Trying to, I I agree with your premise that it's trying to get your name on one more thing, but <clears throat> I also look at this a little bit like the creation of, and not in its intent, but in in the organization of it, in the creation of Homeland Security or Home Office, where in where here in the U.S. or in U.K. Uh, you basically had an like a, a pulling together of different organizations that were already doing this and kind of putting them under a specific umbrella and calling them something new. Um, I'm going to summarize from a quote by Leonard Nimoy, which was read by Len, Len, well, was, he read the quote by somebody else. I don't know who he wrote the quote, but. But anyway, it was from Civilization IV. The the bureaucracy has grown to meet the demands of the growing bureaucracy. (laughs) Yeah. 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 And Squid, thanks for the sub, man. Um, Yeah. It's weird. I'm going to go, my biggest WTF moment for this year was at real Donald Trump. Like just all of his Twitter, everything about, just just kind of everything about, about Trump at all. I there's just so much I don't understand. Not just about him, but about his supporters and and like the political landscape and the Republican Party, like all of it right now just doesn't make any fucking sense at all. So I'm going to quote the sketch that I mentioned earlier. Dinner for one. Uh, same procedure as last year. Yeah. It, it, but it's I don't know he's he's fucking batshit crazy and he's in charge of our country like it fucking where bothered. is he it, uh, right right no he's subservient to someone else but according to our uh, constitution he's in charge of it is, is he batshit crazy and is he in charge oh no no he's definitely batshit crazy because he's either batshit crazy or f- dumb fuck stupid and right. or or, or, or just or, or both like, or tell- just an asshole just just an, an, yes. an, an intentional asshole I, I i honestly i don't think he's just an asshole i, I there is either idiocy or uh, it's not just contempt that he displays it's either idiocy or insanity that accompanies the the contempt perhaps it's even probably all of it it's probably all of it. So anyway, uh, on the lines of Donald Trump, Richard, the impeachment hearings, uh, you've enjoyed them, huh? <laughs> so my biggest WTF moment, and I've watched nearly all of the impeachment hearings like in their entirety. Mm-hmm. And I am, I am disheartened and frustrated and, just baffled by the the split between the parties for one thing mm-hmm. and neither 
side being able to really see too much of the other side, if any. But and, and here I'm going to be partisan. What appears to be the Republican Party's complete denial and and getting behind whatever the White House wants, whatever, whatever Trump wants, Trump gets. Yeah. Doesn't matter what it costs. This is what we're doing. And I just don't get it. And when they had the vote for impeachment and two Democrats voted against one of the items of impeachment, one of the articles of impeachment, no Republicans voted uh, against any, either of the articles. And it was it was just a, appalling to me, absolutely appalling how partisan it is. I don't understand. I don't understand what happened. I know there are really smart people throughout that entire floor. How does this happen? Yep. The puppet master. Yeah. So did you see uh, the video with, with, um, uh, why can I never remember his name? Uh, the, the, the Senator who is talking about Biden, he's like in the back of a car talking about mm -hmm. what an amazingly nice man Biden is. And how could you just not like him? Lindsey Graham, <laughs> like four or five years ago, talking about what a genuinely kind and wonderful man Joe Biden is. And, and here we are. <laughs> yes. It's amazing. So for our historic event category, Amos and I both chose uh, impeachment as well. Um, <clears throat> but Richard, you, you chose uh, Notre Dame. I did. Uh, I did. I, I, you know what? Yeah, sure. It's historic that Trump has been impeached, but it was inevitable it, with, with the, with the moves that he's been making and the lies that he's been telling and, and the, um, the, the, the way things have been going, I didn't think there was anything but impeachment in his future. So, you know, that was not, okay, yeah, sure, hasn't happened a lot, but it was inevitable. To me, Notre Dame, like, that had me tearing up while I was watching that on TV. That was just awful, just absolutely awful to watch. That was like, that was like, and I know it's not, and I know there was no loss of life, and I don't mean to demean this in any way, but that watching the video of the spire falling to me was like watching the towers fall. Uh, so the only saving grace for Notre Dame was I listened to a lot of 99PI. So mm -hmm. I know there are plenty of buildings that have been wiped completely off the face of the earth um, without so much as like a sketch of the amazing artwork and stuff that was on it. At least Notre Dame is exceptionally well documented. That was like the one saving grace, the one silver lining of this, of the cloud of smoke overhead was that there's, there's not an inch of Notre Dame that somebody hasn't taken some kind of record of. And, you know, at least there's that. Yeah, that's true. And, you know, even with hot, with it being closed for Christmas and this being the first time it was ever closed for Christmas since the war, this is, <clears throat> um, you know, th this is in the news again. And they were saying there's probably like a 50, 50 chance whether they're going to be able to bring it back again, whether, whether it's going to survive this or not. But yeah, that's probably better than a lot of people expected. Yeah. All right. So to wrap this up, uh, personal podcasting milestones. Um, I didn't have anything in here because I didn't have, um, again, uh, nothing. This is like the most status quo <laughs> year for me. Um, and that's no different with my podcasting stuff. Uh, but Amos and, and Richard, you had moments, uh, Richard, uh, why don't you start us out with, uh, what was, what was a milestone that you achieved this year? Yeah. On entertainment 2.0, we had our 500th episode God, this crazy. year. Now that wasn't me doing 500 episodes. I stepped in somewhere around one 
60 something, but it's still a lot. <laughs> it's a lot of episodes on a mostly weekly show. So yeah. Yeah. It yeah. was, that was cool. That's going on 10 years. That's, uh, that's... It was more than 10 years because we missed episodes. So See, there it, you go. It, it was, uh, it, it was about 11 years time almost. Yeah. Jeez. This is one of the oldest podcasts in existence. Well, I, there are older ones, but yeah, I mean, there aren't a whole lot of shows out there that can say they've been around for 11 years. Yeah, yeah exactly. Exactly. Yeah. Amos, what was your out of a 15 year medium? Yeah. Um, for me is a uh, forming audio aperture media, uh, doing, make my own company with my own LLC and getting contracts to do editing work and actually being self-employed and, and, uh, uh, being able to, you know, get up and walk the hell away from the work anytime I wanted to. It's been amazing. Um, the work isn't as steady as I would like it to be, but that's because one particular, uh, one, one client in particular has been more, has been a lesson learning experience. Mm. (laughs) That tends to happen. So that does Uh, happen. And Richard, Richard was there for some of the lessons learned. (laughs) That is awesome though, that, you know, you started your own company, your, your, your own boss. And I know you, I understand that you have clients that are technically like your boss, but I would say you know, my wife is my boss more than my clients are. Well, sure. <laughs> say, you can just get in the contract and, you know, take the pay cut or whatever. And right. you don't have to work for those assholes anymore. Um, so, I mean, really you are your own boss. You're, you're the master of your own destiny at this point. And I think that's absolutely freaking amazing. And, uh, it's a place where I want to be sometime in the future. Hmm. It's pretty cool. Yep. It is indeed. Now you and I are kind of in the same place where we're both independent doing what we want to do and we need to figure out how we keep a steady stream of work coming in. Yeah. And that's hard. I'm learning the hard way. That is hard. That was what this year was about for me career-wise. Unfortunately, we're not in the same exact line of work, so we can't help each other as much as uh, right. the, the synergy isn't. <laughs> that we can't just like start working together and getting shit done. But um, right. yeah, it's it's definitely uh, it's. Well, I'm in I'm in the grateful and lucky position where the work that I do now is all extra. I don't I'm not reliant on it. It's not my bread and butter. Yeah, that's so, awesome. Um, now. The real boss has the real job, and that's always in jeopardy because that bitch might quit any day now. So, <laughs> like, it, it could become the bread and butter pretty quick, but as of right now, it's not. <laughs> uh, uh, yeah, one of you earlier said steady stream, and I wanted to try to use that to segue into my next thing, uh, but obviously, I failed. Um, Streamathon, but the Year's Eve Streamathon is less. Then four days, or no, I'm sorry, just over four days away. Uh, we are four days and like six hours or something we're, like we're that. Like, we're like right around 100 hours away. Um, yeah, so this, of course, is the the annual New Year's Eve tradition. Uh, fifth year running now where we raise money for a worthy cause. This year it is through Extra Life for the Children's Miracle Network of Hospitals. Mm-hmm. Uh, headlined this year by... Current Geek and Night Attack for the first time ever for both of them. Um, it's going to be great. If you want to see the complete schedule, please head over to twitch.tv slash DC streamathon. Wait, 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 wait. You've done, you've said all this, but you haven't even mentioned the fact that right before Night Attack, about two hours after Current Geek, uh, is yep. going to be one of our favorite shows, one of our favorite groups of people that have a drink, folks. And they have requested us be on their show for the streamathon to taste out new beers that neither of us have ever had. Nice. Yes. To include <clears throat> this mystery vial, I'm, I'm covering up the name, the label on it. There's a mystery vial here of a much sought after concoction that yep. um, I cannot wait. It's taking all of my willpower to not open this right now <laughs> and ruin the experience for New Year's Eve. Yeah, so that's going to be gonna awesome. Be it's going to be great. Um, also, huge thanks to uh, Big Voice J and Curtis LaRock and um, W. Scott S. One. Like, so many people. Those are the ones that come off the top of my head right now. 
Uh, and then even uh, uh, people like Squid, like he's been instrumental to keeping us on track and reminding us, hey, fuckos, you got to keep, keep working on this. And yeah, oh, so, so many people. Yeah. And he has like two or three segments in a row on this thing, doesn't he? Uh, BBJ and Squid are teaming up for essentially a seven hour block. Oh, my God. Yeah, it's going to be Morning Zoo with a lot of stuff from, from Big Voice J, and then they're going to follow that up a couple hours later with uh, Squid's mixtape. For we'll Do that for a little while where they're going to break down some of the uh, – I don't even know what the topic is. That's going to be an interesting one. Uh, they're going to break down a playlist that uh, of their of their of each of their choosings. And, um, yeah, that's that's a lot, man. That's pretty awesome. Yeah, but uh, twitch.tv slash DC – streamathon uh mm -hmm. get over there all the info's there the schedule's there um tune in uh give a couple bucks to a great cause it's going to be freaking awesome and i cannot wait and all the information the schedule and everything else dcstreamathon.org easy enough yep hey uh richard where uh we've talked about some of the things you've done and some things you're doing where can people find you on the old interwebs and uh, uh interface with you directly yeah. So you can hear me complain about the state of the Republican Party at Richard Gunther on Twitter. Or you can read about technology that I'm interested in, in at the Digital Media Zone. And if you're into smart home stuff, I host two shows, the Smart Home Show with my co-host Adam Justice and my show Home On. And on my next episode of Home On, I have... CNET's Molly Price from their Smart Home editorial team joining us. It's kind of become a tradition that each year now we get one of their editors to talk about what's going on in Smart Home right before CES. And then I'll be out there in Vegas. Nice. Um, I was just informed that uh, Squid's Mixtape would be a battle of the 2010s. Ten songs each by Squid and BBJ going head to head. <laughs> So that should be fun. Kent, where can people find you, man? Yeah, RM underscore Del Noche on Twitter. I'm pretty much Del Noche or Del Noche 77 anywhere else. So uh, look me up on your social media of choice. And do you have a Twitter that you've been liking? Yeah, so this is a thing that we do from time to time. So I did enjoy a tweet um, that I saw earlier today. Um, it's not loading for some reason. I think did they maybe... Uh, <laughs> why is my link not working? This is why you got to copy him. <laughs> Here we go. <clears throat> All right. So this is from uh, at McJesse on Twitter. Uh, Jesse McLaren. Uh, he says, I can't explain my logic, but if your childhood bedroom is still intact, your family is rich. Uh, yes, I remember seeing that. Yeah. I. So my my childhood bedroom was intact for probably... I don't know, quite a long time, definitely over a decade after I left the house. Um, and it was uh, my first reaction to this was like, my family was not rich, dude. Like, what the fuck? Well, he replies to his own tweet and says, many of you claim you have intact childhood bedrooms, but are not from rich families. This doesn't make sense, because if that were true, it would mean I was wrong. <laughs> um, <laughs> so there's, yeah, there's so there's humor there. But it also I mean, it just made me think, like, what does it mean to be rich? Like my my family was not affluent by like any standard that, that like immediately comes to my mind. However, like there's merit to what he's saying because if your family like can afford a home, first of all, that they don't get, get kicked out of or, or be forced to move or uh, what have you. And, and furthermore that they have a, so much space in their home that you've got, the child had the, their own bedroom, and it's still intact to this day, whether that's a year later, five years, 10 years, 20 years, whatever. There is a, a, a certain amount of affluence implied there mm -hmm. that I really never considered before. So I think he, he probably meant this mostly as a humorous tweet, but it made me think a lot. And, uh, but yeah, so check check him out. He's he's actually a really interesting uh, person to follow. It's uh, at McJesse. I like a tweet by feminist next door at e m r a z z, and he said, "I am often told that if I <clears throat> sorry, I am often told that if I want my feminism to be successful, I need to make it more palatable to men. 
which strikes me as much less a solution than exactly the fucking problem. Right. <laughs> yeah. 100%. That's awesome. Yeah. So uh, that's again, that's feminist next door at E M R A Z Z. You can find me on Twitter for much less amusing and not nearly as thought provoking ideas at Ethan Kane, E T H A N C A I N E. And you can find the show on Twitter at Ritual Misery, which we, where we basically just repost stuff from people that follow the show. Kind of. Yeah. <laughs> We're nowhere near as complicated as Richard is with all his different ideas. <laughs> uh, but we, we would love for you to join our conversation in Discord. Bit.ly slash RMP Discord. You can find all these links and more ways to support the show and give feedback at our website, RitualMisery.com. We're live every Thursday, 7 p.m. Pacific on DiamondClub.tv and Twitch.tv slash RitualMisery. Thank you so much to Kevin McLeod for allowing us to use your music. And thank you for listening and or watching for Kent, for Richard, for me, and of course for you. This has been your Ritual Misery podcast. See you next year. Hopes you have enjoyed this program. <laughs> R-A-T-U-A-L-M-I-S-E-L-Y